Dragon's Dogma 2 is Capcom's brand new open world role playing game. In this video I will be going over the very basics to help you get started. A big thanks to Capcom for providing me with this key. This is not like any other guide, I will try to go in depth but also keep it easy to understand. So in terms of character creation, you can take your sweet time, craft the most amazing character that you want. But please make sure that this is a character that you want because later on, you won't be able to customize your character unless you pay. Yes, that's right. You can pay real life money to change your character's appearance later on. But as you progress through the game, you'll be able to earn certain points that allow you to customize your character even more. But yeah, just make sure you really get a good character. So, let's go over character classes, or vocations. In this game, there are various character classes, but when you start your journey, you will be asked to choose among four possible classes. You can unlock some more later in other ways. Four starting classes are Fighter, Archer, Mage, or Thief. So, to put it in simple terms, Fighter is your sword and shield character, melee, strictly melee. Archer is, of course, archery only. And Mage is a ranged character that can use curative spells, meaning you can heal people, you can throw lightning, fire, you can use a rapid fire dart thing. At the beginning, this is the starting base spell. It's very, very quick, but it deals no damage whatsoever. And but you can progress and increase your damage as you go along. So far, Mage has been the single worst starting class that I have tried, and I don't recommend it as a starting class. Later on, sure, you can change your class later. And lastly, we have Thief. Thief is your dexterity build. So if you're familiar with Souls-like games, let's say it's you know it's a dexterity build. You use daggers. You're very fast. You, are, you can use grapple hooks, you can use uh, explosives, it's really really fun. I think it's probably the best starting class that, that you can start with in my personal experience after trying all four. So those are the four starting vocations, fighter, archer, mage and thief. I recommend either starting with thief or fighter. Later on you'll be able to change your vocation, don't worry. You can change your vocation at the vocation guilds. So, each vocation has its own level up system. You level up the, each vocation with discipline points. These discipline points are like the XP system for your vocation, the vocation that you're currently playing as. You gain such points for defeating foes using, you know, that vocation. There is a ring that increases that the amount of vocation points that you can f acquire from the world called the Ring of Endeavor. The Ring of Endeavor is unlocked by gathering all 220 tokens around the world. So the Seekers tokens are very rare items that you can find by exploring in the world. After you find a specific amount, you can turn it in to the clerk at the Vocation Guild and he will reward you with some items as you can see here in the gameplay. The seeker tokens are in the open world, but sometimes they're also inside of towns and things like that. So all you have to do is just explore and go over every single area. So exploring in this game is incredibly important. Not just gathering ingredients, but also finding seekers tokens. Seekers tokens can be turned in to be given at the vocation guild guy and he will reward you with some amazing amazing items some that are very very game changing at the vocation guild you can also change your weapon skills you can acquire new weapon skills by leveling up your vocation uh, as you can see here i am a thief so i just got ensnare and you can read more about it in the descriptions of the the skills but yes you can acquire these skills by using discipline points or DCP. These points are not incredibly rare, but the more you fight, the more you will acquire. You can also change your pawns, skills, and augments in the vocation guild menu. Core skills are skills such as, 
levitation, quick spell, or focus bolt. These are all skills that add something additional to your character, and they are different depending on class. They are separate from weapon skills, but they still use DCP. Make sure to always keep an eye out on your pawn's skills as they will level up with you. As you can see here, he, my pawn here is uh, level 4 mage, so he unlocked a more a stronger version of his base spell. So all you have to do is just equip it and have the DCP to be able to to acquire even more stuff. Yes, including your pawn. Your pawn requires discipline points as well. In terms of how you should be approaching gameplay in this game, that's entirely up to you. But if I can give you some advice, please always explore everything. Sometimes the main quest will lead you down a path and will end up at a specific location. Once the characters are all there waiting for you to interact with them, always try to look for side quests, talk to NPCs that seem to have quests for you, always check out your mini map at the bottom left because your pawns will always or some you know sometimes will point out stuff and that will be marked as an exclamation mark on your map. Or if your pawn sees a chest, it will be marked as a little chest at the bottom left on your map or materials will be marked as a you know iron ore at the bottom left of your map so always keep an eye out listen for their chatter you know and explore because you need those tokens for the vocation guild anyway and you will find them by exploring so in terms of how you should approach this game i suggest you always explore Take it easy, don't rush anything, unless, you know, you're on a timed quest. So, speaking of time, this game actually has a time feature. That means if you pick up potatoes, they will slowly rot in your inventory. And other things like that. For example, meat will go, you know, will spoil and things like that. But, mind you, some ingredients will become better if they are aged. For example, if an apple goes dry, you can turn it into dried fruit if you combine it with, you know, another item. And the dried fruit can be then also combined with something else to create a healing balm or, you know, a healing potion or of some kind. So always experiment with combining items because combining items will also reduce your equip load. So, for example, you pick up potatoes or, you know, spuds, they probably weigh 0.20 grams. But if you combine them with something else, they become dried fruit or whatever, or, you know, whatever it is that you're making. And usually, whatever you make ends up weighing a lot less. So, speaking of weight, yes, your character will become encumbered or heavy if you are carrying too much stuff. This is all very basic stuff that you learn early in the game, but always keep an eye out on your character's, you know, weight limit. So, to counter this, you can give some items to your pawn and they will carry your items for you, but keep in mind, they will also become encumbered if they carry too much stuff. So, it's a good idea to create a very tall and strong pawn so they can carry a lot of stuff for you. If you come about meat by either killing an animal like a pig or a chicken or whatever, you can collect such meat and cook it at campsites. I 100% recommend you do this regularly as this meat will spoil. But if you cook it and eat it with your friends and then go to bed, when you wake up, you will have a ton of buffs. You will become stronger, you will, be, you will have more stamina, and other things like that. So it's always a good idea to eat before bed. <laughs> but once again, if you want to lighten up your load, make sure to combine your ingredients, like apples and things like that that seem to be heavy, or just store them at the merchant. But keep in mind that organic things will rot and they will go bad. So it's not a good idea to just go around grabbing everything, unless you're going to use them, or you, you, you think you need them for a quest. But always do a lot of inventory management, because it matters. And I know it can be annoying, but 
I think it's fun experimenting with combinations and things like that. Speaking of combining things, there is a lot to learn about combi combining things, but all you have to know is that primarily you should be experimenting. Once you experiment and create a new thing, it will save it as a recipe. So the more you experiment, the more you unlock recipes. So that way you don't have to continue guessing. In terms of traveling around the world in this game, you have many options, but primarily I think you should be walking around. The primary way of traveling is walking around the game. And this is the best way to explore and gather collectible items, such as the tokens that I talked to you about earlier. And you know, you find chests and things like that. Additionally, we have the ox carts. Ox, ox carts are found at ox cart locations. These are methods of traveling. So it's a cart that's powered by an ox. It usually costs around 100 gold. You can then sit at in the back of an ox cart and you can fall asleep. And this counts as fast travel. But mind you, it can only take you to another ox cart location. Additionally, you can find port crystals that look like this. Use of a fairy stone will instantly transport you to the location of a port crystals. Port crystals are permanent, but you can also place around 10 in whenever, wherever you want in the world. You may have up to 10 port crystals placed at various locations throughout the world at any one time. Once placed, the port crystals can be recovered if you wish to move it anywhere else. But, but mind you, you will strictly need a fairy stone to use this fast travel feature. And yes, you can use real money to buy fairy stones. This, of course, might be changed later down the line. So let's talk about pawns. As you can see here, my pawn is taking me to a quest. So certain pawns will be able to have special abilities like guiding you to a quest if they've already experienced that quest in their world. Last but not least, I talked about pawns. So pawns are created by other players or created by Capcom themselves. Pawns are your party, your people that help you along the way. You have to continuously be changing the other two pawns that you get in your party, as they will not level up, but you will be unlocking more, you know, higher level pawns as you yourself level up. So let's say you're level one, you'll only see like level up, level one up to seven in the rift so always keep an eye out for these pawns and their quests. So some pawns will have some quests. So some of these player characters, you know, some of these pawn characters created by other players can have their own quests. So it's always better, almost always better to hire a pawn that has a quest. Some pawns will cost RC, which are Rift Crystals. This currency can be earned in the game or you can find some in chests. Or alternatively, you can spend real life money to buy it, which I don't recommend, but hey, if that's what you want to do, that's perfectly fine. These pawns that require RC tend to be better and have better rewards for their quests. So always sw switch out your pawns uh, according to the level and the quest after you've completed their quests and things like that. Always look at your quests. The quests will not become active unless you press the square button or the X button on Xbox or whatever it is on keyboard. So keep a tr keep track of your quests always because it will not show up as a marker unless you have that quest activated. So always do your side quests first if they're nearby and then do the main quest. That's how I would approach the game personally. You can also buy armor at merchants and things like that. So after you get to the capital, you unlock way more potential things that you can do. So I invite you to talk to NPCs and things like that. If you cannot carry or wear something or wield a certain weapon, it will show up with an X or red symbol on it. So not everyone can wear the same things. Like if you're a thief, you can't wear sorcerer clothes and things like that. That's unfortunate, but honestly, I guess that kind of makes sense. Additionally, always make sure that you upgrade your weapons at blacksmiths. Some of these weapons will require certain ingredients like bones and, you know, things that formidable foes drop or iron and copper and other minerals such as those. So it's a good idea to go and look for those things if you plan on upgrading your weapons. 
mind you that not all weapons are good so you can upgrade your starting weapons but they're not gonna be that great so i probably would suggest you get uh, uh, you know new weapons after you get to the capital i personally got the stiletto knives as soon as i got to the battle to the, the capital and it really made a big difference for me as they will de they were dealing almost you know 30 plus more damage when they were upgraded uh, as opposed to the you know 100 damage that i was dealing with the starting weapon anyway you can also upgrade armor and all of that so visit the blacksmith make sure you have the gold for it and it's not that expensive so anyway that is everything I have to share with you. That is the bare essentials, in my own opinion, based on my own experience. So please leave a like on this video. Let me know if this has helped you out. And I will see you in the next video.